Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing great today. Okay, so all I can say right now is what an interesting time to be alive. Our world is intense. It's just a lot of chaos all over the world, man. Too much everywhere. Wars, natural disasters, all kinds of stuff. And then to worsen it all, Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigeria is going through the wire right now. The devaluation of the Nigerian Naira, the scarcity of petrol, the shortage of food, all oh, man, anything that could ever go wrong is going wrong right now in Nigeria. And the people are not finding it funny at all. It's terrible. And on top of all of that, I just stumbled on this news. Uh, I've been thinking about it really for some time. The news that a key leader in Hamas, you know, Hamas leader showed up in Nigeria. And he was on national television, on Chinese television, and he was granting interview. And because of my knowledge of the dynamics of international politics, immediately I saw that my heart stopped. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> you know, because there's a very big difference between local journalism and international journalism. And we do have in fairness, a lot of local journalists who know their onion, like Sheung, they do well. Sheung is, is done well for himself. But you see, there are aspects of international journalism that you really do need a little bit of consultancy to delve into. And I think this is one of them. If I were consulting for channels television, I would never, never have advised them to bring that guy on. Not because I am going the way of the West, because as far as the Palestinian people are concerned, to the best of my knowledge, they see Hamas as freedom fighters. But the rest of the world has proscribed Hamas as a terrorist organization. Yeah. Everybody who fights for something has a reason why they're fighting for something, but the point is that the word says you are a terrorist organization and you are a national television, not a YouTube channel set up by a private individual like Tucker Carlson who just got free from Fox News and decided to go to Russia to interview Vladimir Putin, which he could never have been able to do if he was with Fox. That's a different ball game. But you were national television, there are a lot of I's that must be dotted and T's that must be crossed before you bring certain individuals on air for interviews, especially when the world is at its most volatile state, probably in history. You don't make that kind of mistake, buddy. You take your time, you do your due diligence. You do your research, you ask questions, you consult widely, and then you decide to do it. But this to me looks like there was not enough consultation before taking this step. Now, people have asked me, Joe, what do you think could possibly go wrong because of what happened, because of bringing a Hamas leader, uh, not just into Nigeria, but on national television, to grant an interview to lampoon Israel and to justify the fact that what they did on October 7th was okay because Israel has been oppressing them for so long. And when I got that question, I was like, so much could go wrong. But to set the pace for what I believe could go wrong, which is quite a lot of them, I want you to listen to what the Israeli ambassador to Nigeria said about channels television having Hamas leader on even before he came. 
I want you to listen carefully to his words. Then you can understand potentially what could possibly go wrong with all of this because this has been a very, very big mistake on the side of channels television. Well, firstly, I must say I'm a little bit surprised um, and a little bit disappointed that, that, that you had on uh, somebody from Hamas on the TV program. This is Hamas, who are a terror organization who carried out the largest massacre of Jewish people on October the 7th since the Holocaust. You know, I wouldn't expect you to have a representative of Boko Haram here. I wouldn't expect you to have a representative of ISWAP here. So I was really surprised that you would have uh, a leader of a terror organization here in uh, your studio justifying, and he did justify, uh, the, the, the massacre and the murder, the butchering, the rape, the torture, the burning of children, the murdering of babies. Yeah, on October the 7th, 1,300 Israelis were, were butchered, raped, murdered, tortured, children torched in front of their parents, parents torched in front of their children, people burnt alive, and 260 hostages taken into Gaza. And here was a man saying that, yeah, that's absolutely fine. And I, and I, I was stunned mm. to hear that. First of all, the guy was saying to Sean, I am surprised and disappointed that you could have such a person on air the leader of a terror organization who carried out the largest massacre of Jewish people since Holocaust. And you know how Holocaust is to Israelis. Anything that has to do with Holocaust, it hits so hard. It's just the way Igbos are about the Biafran war. So he says, this one carried out the largest massacre of Israelis of the Jewish people since the Holocaust. He said, you wouldn't expect to have a Boko Haram leader on air. So he is comparing, if you had a Hamas leader, a leader of a group that is regarded as a terror group that is proscribed by the entirety of the West, America, Europe, and some other people, as a terror organization, if you have the effrontery to have them on air, why not bring a Boko Haram leader to also speak on air? And if you can't have a Boko Haram leader on air, why would you have a Hamas leader on air? And he went on and on and talked about how that they massacred Israelis, massacred Jewish people. On October the 7th. And in all honesty, as I was listening to the guy, if you have watched the interview of the Hamas leader, he actually justified what happened on October the 7th. And he has his reasons. But does Hamas regret that attack, staging that attack on Israel? Why you will regret to attack Israel? But there's no regret because on all, that attack all, of all last the, year. All the time they are killing us. They're destroying us. They're killing our, our children. They're taking our lands. I think we waited for 75 years that the world should take some steps in order to help the Palestinians. You know the why, why, why the world, for example, they impose sanction on Sudan, in Libya, in Iraq, in Syria, and everywhere? Why they don't impose sanction on Israel? Is it all the time they believe that we are above of law, above of the international law? We are supported by the United States. No one can count Israel. No one can stop Israel. We can kill the Palestinians. We can take their lands. We can prevent them from the praying in, in, in Luxembourg, Mosque, they're doing all kinds of crimes against our people. No one stopped them. Because of this, I think that the only option for us now to stop the arrogance of Israel and the atrocities of the Israel is to, to attack you see? He said it's because Israel has been occupying their land, has been oppressing them for so long. So basically, he got a platform on Nigeria's national television to justify what happened on October the 7th, which led to the massacre and the war that we are witnessing right now, probably the most devastating war our world has ever seen right now in Israel. Do you not see that everything about this is wrong? Do you not see it? Now, let me, let me help you understand what I'm saying with this. There's a video I just published. In fact, the video I published before, the last video I published on my YouTube channel, 
in that video, the very last one on my YouTube channel, I sent a message to our people in South Africa regarding the mission to ICJ. And I said to them, you know, when you see the world as volatile as it is today, when you see the rate at which our world has hit a fever pitch in tension, there's tension everywhere. It's all tense all over. Wars and, and little triggers could start wars anywhere. When you see these things and you feel the atmosphere and feel the pulse of the world, you got to be a little bit more diplomatic than you, than you would ordinarily be. So rather than sending proper government officials from the South African government, I suggested that they could have allowed an NGO, a non-governmental organization, that is tasked with these kinds of activities, these kinds of, you know, advocacies, to go to ICJ and then take the case of the Palestinians and present it there and begin to seek for justice for the Palestinians. And then the South African government might then support them logistically from behind. But not that they will send government officials openly to go there and do stuff like that. Why did I say that? I said it because the situation we found ourselves in the world today has got to a point where I would say is actually the point of no return. And if you know what that means, you know that when hostilities get to the point of no return, all options are on the table and anybody can be a target. Israel is right now in a war mode. Israel has gotten to a point where anything that looks like a threat gets a bomb. Anything that even as much as resembles Hamas or shows any sign of close proximity to Hamas, you get a missile. That's where they are now. Because if you look at what is happening, Israel is not bombing locations in Gaza alone. Israel is also bombing locations in Lebanon where they believe there are some elements, some terror organizations connected to Hamas or Hezbollah who are also posing a threat to Israel or who are also attacking Israel one way or the other. They are sending bombs to Syria anywhere and they have the capacity they have the support to do whatever to start wars anywhere they want to in this world today when things get to that point you have to advise yourself what if israel says okay south africa did not only stop at coming to take us to icj which israel israel israelis are seeing it that South Africa doesn't think we have the right to defend ourselves from such animals, human animals as Israelis call them. After what they did to us, you think we don't have the right to defend ourselves? That's how they're reading it. And you took us to ICJU, South Africa. Tomorrow they can come up and say, oh, it means that these guys, it, it actually appears uh, as South Africans are harboring some Hamas elements. It looks like some people in, uh, in South Africa are uh, 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 keeping Hamas guys in there. Maybe there's a guy that has a shop somewhere and he's connected to a Hamas guy and they say, oh, Hamas people are using this for their meetings or maybe there is some place somewhere in Joburg or somewhere they will say, oh my gosh, we found a location where the Hamas guys have run to find refuge in South Africa and they're having their meetings there so we're going to disrupt it and a bomb drops there. And they're not going to tell you they're coming to bomb because it is fair play. Once a terrorist is discovered, th that's why they can attack Iran. They find something that threatens Israel. They go cross over and attack Iran, not to talk of South Africa. Anything can happen anytime. That's why diplomacy at the highest level 
is required at this time. Now, take that and place Nigeria in that same position. With what Nigeria has done now, and with the words you have heard from the Israeli ambassador to Nigeria, do you not already see the potentiality of Nigeria becoming like enemy number two to not just Israel, but to the West that actually backs Israel in this same war? Do you not see that there is a reason for Israel to say, mm, it looks like this place is a heaven? Because the first consideration they're going to have is, how did this guy show up to have the kind of access he had? Who organized the appearance on national television? These are the questions they're going to be asking. And before you know it, you're going to see a situation where the Israeli intelligence, Mossad, and, and maybe CIA and the rest of them will just flood everywhere in Nigeria and say, yeah, we're looking for Hamas operatives. And the moment they hear, even when they find Boko Haram, it's fair play. That can be said to be Hamas operative. And then a new front is opened for Israeli bombardment on the West African coast on something that ordinarily should not have concerned us. You see how a tiny little mistake could put innocent people in harm's way. And when something like that happens, tell me how that innocent people are not going to be involved, are not going to be hit one way or another. That's why stuff like this, nobody's saying, oh, you should stand on this side or on that side. No, you have to use diplomacy. Palestinian people probably look at Hamas as freedom fighters for all you care. Most in the Muslim world look at them as freedom fighters. They look at Qatar, their own fellow Muslim nation. Even if Qatar is silently and quietly supporting Hamas, they still had to do this open show to show their partners in the West that, look, we are not in bed with these guys. But what is your own, Nigeria? You are not a Muslim nation, even if you were. Why commit this kind of error? Nigeria is a circular nation. But the events of the last few weeks and months has been very traumatizing to so many people who identify as Christians because the last time we had this other Indian uh, Muslim cleric who was declared wanted in his country and in so, most parts of the West, in Europe, in America, he's declared wanted. He can't go to those places. He showed up in Nigeria out of nowhere. A very popular Muslim scholar. And the guy showed up. I'll read you what he did, okay? His name is um, Zakir Naik. That's his name. Zakir Naik showed up in Nigeria and made a post on X, formerly Twitter. And then the post he made on Twitter was, Interaction with Muslim Air Force Group Captain Abbas Hashim, Military Airport Commander, Abuja Airport, Abuja, Nigeria. That, the thing provoked so many Nigerians and the talk was all over the place. How can a man show up in Nigeria and suddenly begin to call Nigerian Air Force as a Muslim Air Force, meaning that Nigeria is now a Muslim nation. Can you imagine that? And this is another guy that is also wanted that people have said, don't enter our country. Another extreme figure. And we have not even recovered from that. Hamas shows up. So it's so easy for anyone on the side of the Israelis to say that Nigeria has suddenly become an enclave, a safe haven for the people they regard as terrorists. And they will open a new front easily in Nigeria. And when that happens, mark my words, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be funny. Because Israel is on a mission to fight to finish. They are not looking back. And they are ready to hit anything and anyone. And I tell you, sadly so, 
then nothing really will happen. Because the kind of backing that Israel has now, it is beyond imagination. You have to think twice, more than twice, before you can retaliate anything that Israel does to you right now. And even if you're talking about retaliation, who is Nigeria when Israel is mentioned? Where does Nigeria stand? What do we have in Nigeria? Nigeria is still dealing with a myriad of situations, a myriad of problems, a myriad of issues, little internal issues that Nigeria has not been able to get over. And now you're going to have to deal with international confrontation with arguably the strongest military in the whole of the Middle East that has the backing of the strongest army in the world and the rest of Europe? Is this what you want, really? Diplomacy. Wisdom. My Bible tells me that wisdom is profitable to direct. Shion and the team at Channels should have just said, Let's quietly call a member of the Palestinian Authority. If you look at Al Jazeera and most of all these other networks, those guys are speaking out every day. Call one of them. Now that you have gone to interview a Hamas operative, you've gone to get an Israeli ambassador. There is no parody there. There is none. Hamas is not running any nation. Hamas only won elections and took over Gaza, okay? And there is an authority in Palestine. Those ones have the right to have an ambassador or a representative on a diplomatic level. So when you interview one diplomat, you interview another diplomat. Would you say now that the Hamas guy you interviewed is a diplomat that is recognized by all? Because you just interviewed an Israeli diplomat. There is, no, there is no balance there. You have to use your brain. Interview one diplomat, interview the other one. Someone from Palestinian Authority will still share the same sentiment that the Hamas leader was sharing on air. But then nobody's going to say, why did you bring him on? Because that one is recognized by the whole world. So you get yourself out of harm's way. This was wrong in all of its appearances. And I think that Channel's Television and, in fact, the nation of Nigeria should move very quickly to forestall what could be a major devastating fallout from this. I think a lot of diplomatic interventions should be taking place right now to explain and to reassure the other guys that we already have a lot of terrorism going on in Nigeria. But this one that has an issue at hand will probably be the last straw that breaks the camel's back. And my problem and my fear is that Nigeria does not have what it takes to deal with the fallout. While all that needs to be done is done if people are listening. My own is to pray and hope that uh, the fears we all have about this terrible mistake does not come true. Because if it does, Nigeria would never be the same again. May God help us.